Welcome to our special telecom innovation series. I'm Minnie Menon and today the focus is on 3G and how it is transforming the telecom business landscape. Joining me for a discussion on this are Martin Peters, the head of Vodafone in India, Himanshu Kapania, the head of IDEA in India and Ronnie Skruwala, the CEO of UTV Software. Given the kind of monetary, uh, you know, uh, uh, the money you've put on the table for 3G, the, the importance of this as a revenue source because it will have better margins. And what is Vodafone, for instance, doing around that? Well, for example, what we are doing is we have established a center of excellence for uh, the data development in Bangalore, actually. And uh, the whole idea is to explore the world with the application developers. We're not going to develop content ourselves because I think wherever operators have tried to do that, that's not necessarily been a, a big success. And if you look at, for example, the Apple uh, App Store, there's, I think, over 200,000 applications there. So it's not that there is no supply. It's just a matter of finding the relevant supply and then also market it. So I think our challenge is to select those elements of the applications that we can market and then push them to the customers because I think that is a little bit the problem that uh, who finds his way through this 200,000 or in this field with 200,000 applications. Now coming to more serious applications like health and, and healthcare and, and education, I think we need a little bit of help there also from the government, you know, who at a certain moment can really direct, for example, learning institutes to do more or, uh, you know, the healthcare sector to do more. Um, but on the other hand, it's also, I totally agree with what Himanshu said, it's now with the smartphones coming and with the application development mm. coming in a much faster pace. Look at what happened with social networking the last few years. Five years ago, Facebook didn't exist. And now you look at hundreds of millions of people using it. Um, People are, if you, if I, I, even in my family, you know, my family is living, if I look at my wife or my kids, they're living more or less with a smartphone in their hand and they're all the time connected to all their friends. That was in, uh, unthinkable five, six years ago. It goes very quick. Mm. So I think based on that very fast development of those kind of maybe more uh, uh, entertainment type of services, you will also see develop more serious uh, Yeah, you, much, you know, the spread of telecom in India was almost like a viral, you know, before you actually gathered your senses, you had 700 million, uh, you know, subscribers. It's been very, very rapid. How do you make the next, next leap also as rapid? What would, what's the biggest challenge that you would face? I, th I think uh, uh, while you remember the last three years, uh, we've gone through the pain. I've been in the telecom industry from 1996. You're not about regulatory. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm, not, I, the I'm not focusing on regulatory. But the initial pace of growth from 1996 to 2004 was, uh, was very slow. However, I'm again repeating that uh, once the, all the ecosystems get together, we have affordability of devices, affordability of uh, telecom services, and availability of content. Uh, which is relevant for consumers, mm. all of this actually works very well for, uh, for the development. Now, I want to take up this uh, topic about digital customers versus non-digital customers. Uh, and this is what is relevant and why it is important from education and health point of view. Today in India, there are only 17 million uh, customers who actually access uh, Internet. And this is around the same number in 2004 which China had. And it has moved over the last six years to a level of around almost 30% of the consumers uh, access internet uh, to about 275 to 300 million uh, customers. It is my expectation <coughs> that there was no connectivity possible in the tier 2, tier 3 and tier 4 cities for internet and it is going to be a first uh, screen for them to when the 3G services arrive there. And so you're saying uh, that what the, the broadband uh, didn't do and the, what the uh, internet the, the, didn't do, the telecom is going that, to do, that's and right. that's where your leap is going to come that from. That is right. And it is, uh, for us, uh, uh, not only the devices are there, we are starting a pricing mechanism and promotion mechanism to induce a huge amount of trials. We have started a Sachip pricing approach where for as low a price of 8 rupees, a consumer is able to uh, enjoy uh, broadband services. 
Now, these are the these are means in which a lot of consumers is going to come in with their handsets at a low cost handset, get into an experiment into internet, and then decide what is the right relevant service for him. And automatically, the ecosystems is going to build up. Mm -hmm. The second important component is partnership with content providers. I think the model is necessarily going to get built, which is uh, what Martin has been talking about. Uh, that it is not going to be a walled garden approach with telecom operators trying to build up uh, everything, but it is going to be a very healthy revenue share model, which is once the market uh, grows, because I believe that whatever is currently value added services market of 15,000 crore, if it goes to 70,000 crores or 80,000 crores, which is the numbers that we are talking of, we are going to have a jump in of lot of uh, entrepreneurs who are outside currently, but they have capabilities to be able to build in applications and bring in consumer centric uh, content, mm. and that will really help grow the marketplace. Mm. Mm. As we see it evolving, Ronnie, then are we seeing a situation where it has to be a very close symbiotic relation between the content uh, developer and the platform? Because both of you are actually learning the ropes of how to do it, right? Yeah, it is. It has to be. I mean, it's like if you take the parallel in the broadcasting or television space, you're actually, this role is being done by one, the, between the carriage and the distribution, the marketing, which is what the telco brings to the table, and the content actually has been one function. So you have to work it very symbiotic. There's no question about that. And one other thing I think in the pressure point that we look at is that I do believe 4G, we will be one of the few countries in the world where actually 3G and 4G as is coming at a time very close to each other. Mm. So I would say, why is that not a pressure point for the telcos also? That the time is ticking that there could be bandwidth far in excess and better than this bandwidth that will suddenly make everyone flip and consume content or consume value added services is in a very Is 4G giving you sleepless nights, Martin? Because at the end of the day, you'll have to do it, expedite the whole thing before that new technology comes and then everybody starts adapting to that. I mean, how do you see it panning? Because you've seen these cycles play out in many markets. No, I actually, it's not giving me sleepless nights <laughs> at all because I think in the end, this is not really technology driven. We should be always very careful to think about a new technology as that's driving the development. Of course, it facilitates the development. But we were talking, for example, about mobile payments. Actually, for mobile payments, you don't even need 3G, of course. You can very well do it on 2G. It's a very simple service. It's far more about indeed the ecosystem and the uh, uh, the right relevant content. Now of course the moment you go into kind of entertainment or sports content you would like to see movies and then you need a fast technology. But I think that the, the real big uh, consumption will not only be that, there will be lots of other services that do not demand so much bandwidth that you would immediately need 4G. Uh, I think that will take time before that comes. I, uh, I will really want to because this topic is uh, very close to my heart on the 4G front and I just wanted to contribute uh, uh, on, on towards it. I don't think the debate which is, uh, which is uh, popular debate in the media is about uh, 2G or 3G or 4G. I think the debate is, has to be centered around the consumer and uh, uh, whether uh, the, which technology is better and uh, uh, which standards are better is no more relevant. The relevance is uh, which is going to be mass market, which is going to get adopted uh, in, a, in a large scale and which, which is relevant for the customer. And uh, there is a, a migration path and which is when no migration path can ever be crossed over. You have to, uh, you have to move from a tadpole situation uh, into the next level. You can't le leap one generation. There is no no method. And as a content provider, do you think? I, I mean, well, how, I, how I, have are you I have a different viewpoint because I think we, all India does is leapfrog. And I think as a DNA, we leapfrog. As a country, we leapfrog for various reasons. And there is no reason why. I, mean, I absolutely agree with the fact that consumer is the pivotal part. It's not technology. They don't understand what 2G or 3G or 4G is, or they do, but that's not relevant. But when you're looking at the consumption pattern, if the 4G offering is much more you customer friendly and has thought of the package and offering while the 3G element is looking at talk, then I think the time has run out. And I think that's what I was saying more as a point. Absolutely, the customer offering, I think, in 4G will be a lot more customer friendly than 3G, which is adapting from talk to content. And I think there, there could be a slit. <laughs>
in association with Taj Holidays, it stays with you. The new Tata Manza. Beautiful color. Big space. Student controls. Digital intelligence. 90 PS power. We have. It's what every girl wants to be. The new Tata Manza. A class apart. Celebrating 400,000 sedans, drive home a Monza and win a trip to France. Mega Monday Celebrity Special. Every era has its superstar heartthrob. Frank Sinatra, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder. Now, his name is Justin Bieber. From singing on YouTube to teen super phenom. Then, who can forget the first time we heard her voice? We watched her every step of the way. And it's all led to this. Oprah, tonight, 9 p.m. I don't need no cares, I don't need no worries, I just want share. Get unlimited internet for a day at 96 rupees and change your world. Just dongle with MTS Emblaze. That's what the flavor of the market is today. JP Morgan has initiated a coverage in stocks rising. One of Europe's best performers today is Chile. It is completely an out-and-out -out traders market. Countdown, presented by the Bombay Stock Exchange, IPF. Presented by the Bombay Stock Exchange, IPF. This is a guy without any problem of self-confidence. I felt the hoop. Yeah. Super focused, super technical. The biggest single surprise is the peculiar and tenacious personality. Mark likes to do things his way. Look how successful it's made Facebook today. Once you have a connection, it's a long-term relationship with that person. Tune in to the journey of Facebook and the maverick behind it. The Glenn Levitt Books and Bloomberg UTV present Game Changers. Brought to you by the Glen Livet Book. But let's delve a little into the 3G phenomenon and see how how is content being driven by the new technology, Ronnie, in terms of when you're sitting as a content producer, what are the, the things that you're looking at when you're developing content? The for customer. This? I'm thinking in my core audience here, what is it that he wants? What is he going to get from this medium that he's not getting from a passive one-way medium? This is a two-way medium. It's an interactive medium in every aspect. So interactive uh, content in that form, short-form content and personal. I think the reason Facebook has worked is because it's social and it's personal and it's interactive. If we just take these three, these three things in India and create content or massively re-aggregate content or repurpose content mm. in whatever form it is, I think that's your offering. And that's why I come back to the 50,000 crore question rather than the 5,000 crore question. Uh, okay, I, only thing I'll add is regional, the one of the advantages which mobile companies are going to offer which was not available in the broadcasting se sector because end of the day, uh, the penetration of broadcasting was not very heavy on the uh, uh, into the rural areas and into various states, which is where the mobiles are uh, going to wait. We are covering, in the first year itself, I'm covering 50% of, uh, of the total consumer base, and by the second year, I'll cover about 70-75% and deep inroad into the rurals. So there is a content which is uh, by regional by nature, language, culture, which was not so easily available in the broadcast medium can actually now reach through the mobile phones. Yep. And that is one area which is completely unexplored because they don't and have... And they will pay for it. And they will pay for it. That's the right. reason why today DTH is, we're the largest DTH country in the world. Please analyze that DNA. Why is it? It's not happening because it's a premium product. Anywhere else in the world, it's a premium product. In India, it's a mass offering. It's in lieu of cable television. So the cable operator, you'll pay five rupees and you won't pay that six rupees for that cable. But on DTH, you'll pay that extra. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the consumption pattern. But you know what? Uh, this opens up, uh, Martin, is the fact that you have many Indias. Now, I in certain cases, affordability becomes the most crucial consideration. So will content and what you put out through your 3G and, and your value-added services be determined by which market it, it is in? And will that also drive the innovation around that? 
I think there will be content for various markets. Uh, take the example of the rural people who typically don't, don't have even access to power 24 hours a day. So if you want to switch on your TV, you need power. Now, if the TV doesn't work, your mobile still works. And we see that, that people are using it to listen to music via the mobile because there's no other way of getting access to entertainment. I think there are various uh, content streams for various groups of people. If you talk about education, indeed, that might very well become very big in India. And I think that people are willing to pay for that because it's the future of their children. Uh, today, probably, the applications are not yet there. I'm sure there will be a huge development. So it's very difficult to talk about content as it is one thing. There, there will be so many types of content, and it will be targeting so many types of people. But in general, I'm, I'm quite confident that uh, in India, we will indeed leapfrog simply because the alternative is not there. But do you, you have enough content being supplied for this? Because the success of 3G is going to be determined by what else you can offer through that platform. It becomes a, a channel, right? I mean, and the content becomes the king over there. Is there enough going around? I mean, is there, is, there is lots there? of content in the world. And, and, and I think uh, what we said in the beginning, what we need to do is to find the way of localize the content. With so many local languages, with so many local habits, uh, even the movie industry in India is not one movie industry, is it? So you need to localize it. And I think that is the challenge we have, where probably in the U.S., if you have one type of content, you can uh, transmit it to all the states of the U.S. and they will enjoy uh, the, same, the same thing all. That's not the same thing in India. So we will need to localize it. Mm. But I would uh, like to say just one thing. We always, when we say the word content, what's the first picture that comes into our mind? You know, the oh, video yeah. and what is self-created. The key of content of the future is self-generated. So. Okay, it's a complete democracy. Anyone today, because of technology, it's a complete democratic approach to content. So interactive, not just interactive content, but self-generated content. Education is not going to be, it's going to be an interactive classroom. The reason you can do it better on the mobile than you can do it on television is it's a one-way education. You can have a classroom of 40 people gathering at 1 p.m. or 4,000 people and run that. Now, where else would you be able to do that? You could do that in China, and I don't think there are many other places where education would have that kind of a rustic need for that thought process. So it's all self-generated. 80% mm. will be so, self-generated. So when you are actually planning content for 3G in your various platforms and you're trying to you know, adapt to it, what, what is the kind of research that's thrown up? Uh, what are the kind of uh, parameters that you're using to develop that content? No, I think information as much as entertainment is coming out to be a very strong need. Mm -hmm. And people will pay for that in this country because that's a different need that they haven't got in any other form except okay. for the newspaper. In that. So there is a fair amount of all of that. And I think if it can, that's why I said the partners have to come together and actually see that there's a market and co-write a business plan and you'll find that it'll explode. But Mini, let, let me push you back. You've been driving home the point that content is going to ride the growth of non-voice. Mm. I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm only uh, asking you to just think about it. Once ecosystem is available, consumers are going to push us to be able to develop content that they require. Absolutely. So that's a slightly different way of to be able to uh, this. And let me take, let's take example again of RBT or uh, uh, call a ring back tone. It is not a Hindi content. Why it is a huge success? Because uh, if I were to look at my south uh, southern states, each state has its own requirement. And content aggregators are able to give me all the needs of individual states and in language. And that's what has uh, ticked in the mind of the consumer because there was no other alternative. That language, uh, that music was not available. The same is going to happen as there is going to be devices which has got inbuilt camera built into it, inbuilt uh, uh, access for browser built into it. He is going to demand content, and once the d demand for content comes in, I'm sure it will all follow through. Mm. Yeah. Is competition also going to determine that, uh, Martin? Because at the end of the day, we are in one of the most fiercely competitive marketplaces. You know, where you've seen that playing out in voice. Can it play out when you roll out 3G? And could that be a constraint, or do you think it's an opportunity? I think it's a fantastic opportunity, and I don't see it, to be honest, uh, as competition here. I think it is development, and and every operator will try to develop these services. But I don't think you can monopolize any form of content. That's very difficult. It has been tried before. It's not working. So um, I really hope that all my competitors develop good services because in the end, my customers will use them also. I think it's really all of us together who have to develop this market. And yes, it, there will be competition, but actually the competition drives the development. Mm. How far has that, uh, really, uh, you know, that, that, has that platform been created where uh, service providers no. sit with content? And what needs to be done for that? Well, I mean, I think just a little bit of dialogue and a little bit of upping the priority on both sides. Uh, I, I think the, 
uh, evolution is happening. What has happened as far as the last 10 or 12 years is uh, voice is a democratic product. Mm -hmm. Whether it is uh, uh, a customer who is at a uh, income level of $15 a day to a, to a, uh, to a completely HNI or a corporate customer, everybody gets a similar kind of service. Now what happens is the real segmentation, consumer segmentation is evolving and there is a needs are going to be completely different. And that is the re reason when the needs get different, I need to sit around with the content providers and collaborate and articulate my needs so that they can actually develop it for us. So I, I think this is a process which is going to happen and I can assure you that what has happened around the world, whether it is iPhone development, whether it is Android or whether it is uh, uh, in uh, Docomo's development, the similar kind where millions of developers have go, uh, joined hand together and taking small niches, whether it mm -hmm. is in the game sector or information or in, in the payment sector, online payment, m-commerce, all of this will come into this country. Well, you know, Martin, what is interesting is most of the innovation has been driven by uh, smartphone companies or OEMs and not service providers. In India, in a sense, you're, you're looking at a service provider actually developing a market. So, I mean, is there a dichotomy there? No, I don't think it's a dichotomy. Innovation is happening at many layers and many levels. You know, we innovate in our technology. We innovate in the way we manage our networks. We innovate in the way we bring services to the customers. But the content is not really, indeed, our business. You need a different DNA to develop content. That's why we have all these uh, media companies. We have application developers. And that's a form of innovation also. Then you have the OEMs who are kind of in the middle of that. And they facilitate the innovation by bringing beautiful new terminals like Apple does or uh, Samsung does or HTC does. It's fantastic because they all are, again, competing. So the com competition really drives their development. So there's innovation on a lot of levels, but it needs to come all together to really get this breakthrough and the leapfrog that we are so, expecting So when you look at 3G in, in the Western market, the more developed market, what is the next step of evolution? What, what are the next stages that we can see in India? Because right now, the big problem is the rollout of it. I mean, most people have not really experienced 3G. You know, only a few have. So, I mean, what can you expect over the next couple of years? The, the big success of Internet in general has been that it's a networking uh, technology. So you need in a networking technology a lot of people because then it starts to behave as a network. Now the problem even in the more developed market has been that the rollout of broadband, especially wireless broadband, has actually been not as big as we would have hoped. So I think the next step there is to develop broadband really everywhere and then you will see the next level of applications also developing. <laughs>
brought to you by Nissan, Knowledge Partner, Frost and Sullivan, Cafe Partner, Mocha, Multiplex Partner, Big Cinemas, a Bloomberg UTD Pulse Initiative. If you're a first-time investor, frightened about that first move, planning for good old 40s, aiming to keep failures away, worried about those hard-earned savings, and puzzled about your choices, it's time to meet our experts. The Financial Planner, presented by the Bombay Stock Exchange, IPF. Presented by the Bombay Stock Exchange, IPF. In association with Kuwani Luxury Holidays to Germany with Kuwani. Uh, a last bunch of questions on the content side. So, when you look at, you know, you, you're into gaming, you're you're uh, in broadcasting, you're looking at uh, at the movies business. Now, over the next few years, because of 3G, do you see the the, the screens, you know, coming together? And you know, you've often said that the the second TV home revolution that India hasn't seen will probably happen now because of the new technology. Do you have have you seen signs of that already? I think we're seeing signs of that because I, again, go back to the younger generation. They have they don't consume and they don't touch point uh, at that first TV set. So the second TV set, I wouldn't call it the second TV set. It's the second gadget, whatever that may be, which is a consumption pattern. And I think that's the core that if everyone focuses on. That's the offering. There's more than the signs prevalent on that. Right now, the youth attraction is everything but consumption of content because they haven't had that opportunity. The mobile is their liberation piece, frankly. Today in India, they look at this as their independence. Independence from not hanging around and having a, a sort of a watched over telephone conversation. <laughs> they can go out, do whatever they want to do. So it's a very emancipated piece. Now, if we can take that to the next level where they can become their interactive piece, mm. I think that's really the power. So Pretty much all content will have to be made for that separately, and do you think enough of that shift is happening? Again, and with the with the content definition being that it's going to be self-generative, interactive, social, and not necessarily content as put movies, television shows, and existing. But it's content. kind of fluid for a content provider who's got revenues coming out of this. I mean, but how do you see the phone got a camera? Then why is everything? Why, why is the technology? So you can to you can level? actually move that yeah. into. What is the fun that most people are today having? Just get out there, make a few of this thing, make your picture album. That's content. Why is that not content? Why is the family birthday party not content anymore? Hmm. Okay, just because funniest American home videos was the only advent of television. You look at that, and there's plurality of that everywhere you go today. So make your own movie, make your own, make your own news, yes. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps. The, whole, the whole of YouTube is all is self generated. Two people having a conversation, a TED discussion yeah. is content. Yeah. Absolutely. Last question to the two service providers. You spend a lot of money on 3G. What's the payback period that you're looking at? Uh, I, I think we've got a license for 20 years <laughs> and uh, uh, it's fundamental belief uh, with the idea that this is going to be a huge growth opportunity. Um, uh, and uh, it is uh, our belief that uh, as GSM uh, turned the tide as far as the country is concerned and made uh, voice available en masse, uh, so would uh, there will be a standard uh, migration of most of the GSM customers over 3G in the next 3 to 5 years. And uh, uh, it is a, uh, our fundamental belief over a period of time, uh, the consumers who are purely voice, voice and text, uh, very large percentage of them will move from voice text into data. Right. Martin? Yeah, I think it's actually a pity that that question uh, is asked simply because we are indeed, as Imanshu said before, we are in generations of technology. So it's just the next generation of the same technology. It's the next chapter in the same book. It's not so much about payback for that specific chapter. We are talking about the book. Mm -hmm. And the book will continue. And it's more a necessity. It yes, is a, the, the a book will continue. Evolution of and actually the only reason that this was such a big thing was the fact that India didn't make enough spectrum available in the first place. So if there was more spectrum available, the services would be better available and we wouldn't have this discussion at all. Okay. Models, revenue sharing models from the content provider to the service provider.